Hello again, everybody. Zach Attack is here with my TNA Back Wrestling Review for tonight, Thursday, May 30th, 2013. Of course, the final impact before Slam Anniversary this Sunday from Boston. My thoughts on tonight's impact? I was okay impact tonight to hype up the pay per view. TNA seemed like the momentum was going on their side, especially with the results of many matches this evening. But indeed, eight and eights, they have an answer for everything. When it comes to countering every attempt that TNA tries to gain leverage in this war that's going on between both these events. Now, before I um, talk about Impact tonight, there's two things that I kind of mentioned on the attack line and something I forgot to mention. Bound for Glory announcement tonight, San Diego, California, uh, October 20th is Bound for Glory. It's kind of weird that you're like a few days away from Slam Anniversary. He announced your Bound for Glory location, which I mentioned on the attack line today from my grandmother's, grandmother's house. Um, I mentioned that, but I forgot to mention that the other big thing about Tina this week that was an impact related was the fact that a, new, a big name has been signed to Tina, a new person's coming in, a free agent. Uh, Batista's denying it, so is Kid Cash and even MVP. So who knows who this big name is going to be signing with TNA. Will he debut at Slammiverse Suite? Time will tell. Now, on with tonight's impact, which of course kicked off with Ace and Eights, specifically Bully Ray and Devon, blabbing about their matches this Sunday. Of course, Bully Ray will be taking on Sting this Sunday for the TNA World title in a no holds bar match, and if Sting loses, he will no longer be able to fight for the World Heavyweight Championship. Probably as long as Bully Ray's champion. Of course, Devon getting ready for his match against Joseph Park this Sunday with the television championship on the line and still keeping his eye out for Abyss. We haven't seen this by his little return. We haven't seen Abyss since his big return. I thought Joseph Park's character was dead. Then, they're bringing all the people they attacked. And of course, challenging Sting and Mr. Park to a tag match. So that was the first match of the evening. Sting and Joseph Park teaming up against Team 3D, Devon and Bully Rat. Now, of course, the faces, indeed, came in like a house of fire, trying to gain the momentum for their matches this Sunday as they went up against Ace and Ace in a, in a fire. A uh, blaze of glory. Well, unfortunately, that blaze diminished quickly as Ace and Ace, Devon and Bully Ray took control for the later half of the matchup. Of course, isolating specifically Joseph Park in their corner. Especially Devon weakening Park, getting ready for their match this Sunday. Of course, quick tags in and out. Isolating Joseph Park in the corner. For the majority matchup, he was the one getting most of the damage done, getting most of the beating from Ace and Ace. Specifically, Devon and Bully Ray in this matchup. But of course, Joseph Park got the hot tag, the Sting, and boy oh boy, Sting came in like a house of fire. Dominating the later half of the matchup, we gaining control as he was indeed down in over Devon after Devon tagged him, tagged in after Bully Ray took care of uh, Mr. Park. And of course, Sting came over with the splash in his big move, the Scorpion, the, the Stinger Splash, and of course, locking in Scorpion Deathlock on Devon. And even Joseph Park came in trying to deliver the Scorpion Deathlock on. Bully Ray basically stereoscoping, but of course both men, Devon and Bully Ray, counted out of their positions. Counted out of their submissions. As Bully was taking care of Joseph Park, of course uh, Devon was going for a big move on uh, Park, and all of a sudden, a business move music hits. Finally proving to everybody, like I said, even if you're, I know there's probably a few of you that, that are still like, Joseph Park and Abyss are the same people. Well, you know now that Abyss's music hits as Devon was going for a big move on Joseph Park and Abyss never came out because Joseph Park's Abyss. Abyss is Joseph Park. Get it straight, people. If you're still oblivious to that, I need to slap you. But I know probably everybody knows now what I'm saying. Uh, as Abyss's music hits, of course, it, that music distracted Devon who wants a piece of Abyss if a Devon distracted, he was prone to a Scorpion Deathlock 
story depth drop from Sting in a 1 2 3 victory for Sting and Joseph Park. Even Joseph Park's face was like, Yeah, my brother's here, but I'm his, but I'm a miss. So, so there you go. Sting and Joseph Park begin the impact by defeating Devon and Bully Ray. But Sting doesn't specifically pin Bully Ray in this matchup. He pins Devon, like I mentioned, but still. It gives Sting and Joseph Park momentum for both the matches this Sunday, especially Sting with this kind of a win must win situation, which was put in mildly by Miss Dixie Carter, who came out for our next segment. She didn't say anything about Fluid because it was made after this impact was taped last week. But of course, Sting is a member of the Teeny Hall of Fame. The only member thus far. And they're saying that tomorrow night they're going to announce the next member of the TNA Hall of Fame. Sting was the first member that was announced last year during Slam and Buster. Now the next member will be announced. Who knows who's going to be? AJ Styles, who knows? Like, everybody had so many guesses. Even Jared was a name mentioned, but it was uh, Sting that was the first name. So we'll see who will join Sting as the second member of this ever slow building TNA Hall of Fame, announcing one name a year. WWE Hall of Fame does the ceremony every year, and that's like five names. Maybe TNA is taking it slow. Because it's new to them. So maybe. That's what, that's what WWE did. For the first couple of years. They only did them. Maybe like one of. Like back in the 90s. When WWE Hall of Fame. Was not a big ceremony. They just did them like. One name at a time. And then have like a big ceremony. A few years down the road. So we'll see how Tina Hall of Fame grows. We'll see who find out. Who will be the next member this Sunday. As Dixie Carter was making a statement. Here comes. Uh, Doc. Here comes Briscoe. And here comes Bischoff. Cornering. Dixie caught in the corner until Jordan Magnus made the save and chased him out of the ring. And of course, Joe has been out storyline wise for about a month after being taken up by Ace and Eights. He indeed wants a piece of Ace and Eights tonight. So he challenged Mr. Garrett Bischoff to a match. But unfortunately, the match didn't end up happening. It was kind of a silly segment to build up for a match that was going to happen. That's going to happen at Slammiversary. Uh, basically, Ace and Eights got involved in the matchup. Kind of a squeaky finish, kind of a quick finish because Ace and Eights got involved and uh, got involved in this track. Like the other members, Bischoff, Friend, Doc, and Mr. Briscoe. Of course, Magnus, who was in the corner as well, of uh, Joe, he got beat up by Ace and Eights, so that's what caused the uh, match to be thrown out. And of course, Joe said, I knew this was going to happen. I knew, like, this side of shenanigan is kind of. Bullshittery, screwy finish was going to happen with me and Mr. Bischoff. So I already asked Miss Carter to make a match for this Sunday. A six man tag. It'd be Doc, Briscoe, and Bischoff against Joe, Magnus, and another person who was also taken out by Ace and Eights and has been seen for a while. And I said it last week, and I was a citizen of Tackling today. Like, like since Joe and Magnus is back, how about, uh, Jeff Hardy. Yes, Jeff Hardy will be joining Magnus and Joe this Sunday. Now, I mentioned in the attack line that Jeff Hardy has already been announced to return this Sunday at Slammiversary. It was announced on TNA's website today that Jeff Hardy's returning this Sunday. I thought it was going to be like in a special guest with Free Wall in the Sting Bully Ray match, but he'll be teaming up with Magnus and Joe against Ace and Age, specifically Doc, Bischoff, and Briscoe. So, I think Hardy returns after being out for a month. And of course, Sting going up against Bully Ray. But if Bully Ray does end up winning and causing Sting an opportunity to go for a title again, you can tell that Jeff Hardy, when he comes back, you know he's going to have one thing in mind. Basically, with Vance on Ace and Eights. And of course, ready to once again try to challenge Bully Ray for the TNA World Heavyweight Championship. Like I said, revenge is on Hardy's mind. And of course, Ace and Eights, better watch out. Now, on our next. Matchup. Man, a lot of commercials tonight. <laughs> this video before a pay per view, you know? Like, a lot of commercials tonight. A lot of commercial breaks. That, no one would really like. We only had four real matches tonight. You know, you had Sting and Magnus. Of course, the second match was thrown out. Then we have the real second match of the night after Magnus kind of got beat up by Ace and Ace to prevent the Joe. Briscoe, a Bishop match from happening, which led to, like I said, the aforementioned six-man tag with the return of Hardy this Sunday. I went on to an eight-man tag involving the 
four teams that will be competing this Sunday in the uh, Fatal 4 8 tag match. James Storm and Gunner teaming up with Chavo and Hernandez against Bad Influence. Cass and Daniels teaming up with Aries and Mood. Now, Storm, I am very surprised that Storm's even going to wrestle this Sunday because I read that Storm got an injury. He's out for a few weeks. That's why you didn't see Storm wrestle that much. Can you tell it? Did, did I or did I not see Storm get tagged in? He did not do anything. I bet you they're wrestling him for Sunday. Wanting to wrestle a little bit. Of course, you can tell he's wearing a knee brace. But of course, his partner Gunner stole the show. As of course, Gunner was aggressive. No one wanted a piece of him. Each of the heels were quick tagging each other to avoid facing off against Gunner. Like Daniels quick tagged the Cass. Then Cass tagged in the Aries. Then Aries tagged in Wood, who was left to fight all alone against Gunner, who was, of course, now I can't believe Gunner's face. You know, I've never seen, of course, Gunner's been healed for so long. He was part of Fortune, part of a mortal, and now, you know, he's a feel, he's a face. But, of course, that's after Gunner basically dominated for the, dominated over Wood, of course, Wood found a way to indeed try to fight back. But, of course, uh, Gunner kept kicking control until he tagged in Chavo to nail the three amigos onto Mr. Mr. Wood. But indeed, uh, Kaz was trying to for a big move, but he got kicked off. And of course, Aries came in and he dominated a drop kick all over uh, Chavo. And that's when the heels took over from once a matchup. Of course, Aries and Wood double teaming, doing their own little double team move. Of course, they were dominant throughout the entire throughout these this part of the matchup. And uh, as Java was getting his butt with most of the heels, specifically, like I said, double teams with uh, Aries and Wood. But indeed, Java got the hot tag Hernandez, Hernandez, who of course really threw his weight around and of course used his power, uh, literally used his power all over everybody, knocking everybody down, including a big shoulder block on the Wood. You, you can tell the hit was stiff. As indeed, uh, Hernandez was taking over the matchup big time for the faces, dominating over everybody. But indeed, even by influence was trying to double team him. But of course, that got counted. And of course, Aries finally got some moves in. He came in like a house of fire, even had Hernandez up for the brain bust at one point until Child Hernandez counted out of that. And of course, after that counter from Supermax, here comes Gunner in. Again, of course, Aries tried to avoid him, but indeed Gunner was, of course, out of control. Nailed him with some big moves until, of course, he copied Lex Luger and nailed the torture rack for the victory. That's his new move, huh? The torture rack. Nice Lex Luger whip-off, Gunner. Anyway, so Gunner's stealing Lex Luger's move as his finisher, but what the heck? Anybody can use it. But, hey. Like, but it was specifically personified by Lex Luger. So there you go, Gunner with the with the torture rack, got the win for his team, and of course giving him and Storm dominance, and of course the big momentum for the tag team title match this Sunday. Even though Storm's kind of injured, so who knows? Maybe Storm may be taken out during the matchup because Storm's injured. I also picked up one other thing during the Joseph Park a bit uh, Joseph Park Diva match. I bet the lights will go out at one point during the match, and Joseph Park will come back out dress up like Abyss. I bet you that will happen. Or another Abyss music distraction. Something involving Abyss will happen this Sunday at Summer Bus for sure. Whether it's Abyss finally coming out or or is music hitting and distracting even like it did tonight. Now on to our next segment which involved uh, Mickey James. Celebrating her win against Velvet Sky this Sunday by Hook not this past Sunday, but uh last Thursday by Hooker Crook to become the new TNA we're not going to champion. Is it just me? Or is Mickey finally turning heel? Kind of. Like you, you can see the seeds were planted for a possible Mickey James heel turn this evening. By the way, Mickey was talking to Velvet. They hugged a little. You know, they were being friends. But then you heard Mickey's like, Wasn't Velvet great? Wasn't she a great champion? She was a great champion. I'm the champion. Now, basically, that's what she's saying. Like She didn't really turn heel, but at least maybe... Finally, some hints of it. By the way, Mickey was talking. It just kind of felt like she was here. Wedding. And, uh, 
She was talking about like everyone's hating me for my finish, you know. But the way I kind of beat Velvet by clipping the knee and taking advantage of a situation, you know, maybe, like maybe that's why you hate me. And of course, uh, Mickey was gonna be challenged by Velvet. Velvet wanted a rematch for this Sunday, but of course, Velvet's knee still bugging her. So Mickey's like, "We want your rematch when your knee's better." And I know you were persistent on wrestling last week despite your knee injury, and I won. So, as yes, Mickey and Velvet having a little talk, here comes Gail Kim, who's of course wrestling this Sunday against Terrence Welk, which could end up being a number one contender's match, especially since Gail's like, I want another shot. And Velvet's like, I'm in that in line, bitch. I'm the former champion. I need a wee match. But then, of course, Gail was kind of the reason why Velvet was weakened, because, of course, uh, Gail's been, Gail's been using the figure four in the ring post lately to knock out people, including and especially Miss Taryn Terrell. And of course, and can you tell, like I said, throughout this whole segment, Mickey was kind of hinting here, the ultimate hint was when Gail attacked Velvet and was ready to knock her into the figure four again on the ring post. Mickey didn't do anything. She just stood there. And then Taryn Terrell made the rescue for Velvet and attacking Gail came out of the ring. And then Mickey James walked off without doing anything. So like I said, Mickey James slowly but surely may turn here eventually. But till then, Gail and Taryn, since they're in the ring, let's have the mixed tag. Kenny King teaming up with Gail against Taryn Terrell and Chris Saban. Of course, all four of these competitors involved in matches this Sunday. Chris Saban taking on Kenny King along with Suicide this Sunday at the Ultra X Triple Threat for the Exhibition Championship. And Taryn Terrell against Gail, like I mentioned, wrestling each other. They start off this matchup, and of course, Taryn wanting revenge on Gail for all she's put her through, especially with the Fango 4 leg lock on the wing pulse, taking her out for a couple weeks, coming like a house of fire, really dominant with anger and revenge on her mind. As Gail was trying to gain back control after a fresh, early morning start for Miss Taryn, of course, both girls tagged in the men. Of course, Saban and Kenny King got on for most of the matchup, as Saban was trying to gain momentum for himself. I'm trying to get a big win in this tag match against the x Division champion, giving himself momentum for the championship match this Sunday, which is exactly what he kind of did. Despite King's efforts to try to dominate over Saban, Saban kept getting an advantage, and of course, the knockouts got involved in the matchup. Like, with all four people in the ring, with all hell breaking loose all over the ring. And as Taryn hit Gear in the end, Saban hit King with, of course, the scoop slam pile driver and a 1 2 3 victory over the TNA X Division champion for Mr. Saban. So, like I said, Saban won the momentum and he got it by pinning the champion. But as Saban and King were going to duke it out after the matchup, here comes Suicide trying to insert his name into the everyone's thought process, trying to gain momentum for himself for the match on Sunday. And, of course, that left, like I said, Suicide stared at both. King and and Mr. Saban, as of course Suicide was the last one standing following taking out Kenny King and Saban following this tag match. So there he goes. Saban pins Kenny in a tag match. And of course, those two will face off against Suicide in a triple threat alternate X match this Sunday at the pay-per-view. Now, on with our main event. I think that's next. Main event's next. I think it was the main event. AJ Styles taking on Mr. Anderson. Of course, we all thought, kind of thought AJ was going to join Ace and Ace. But um, he didn't, despite hinting that he was going to join him. Even nearly cutting with the ball hammer and drinking a beer with Ace and Ace. AJ said, where well, he showed his colors by showing allegiance to nobody by attacking Ace and Ace. Of course, he's not aligned with TNA. And the shirt and the sign say it all. I saw a sign that says, AJ on me have won, and AJ got a new shirt that says no one. Basically, AJ's in for himself. The Lone Wolf, as it was nicknamed by Mike Tanay. And AJ Styles, who's of course a very high flying wrestler, decent main event, by the way, decent main event. Um, AJ, who's, who's normal matchup, he's always hot and ready. He's always going for the big, fast, high flying moves. He was all, he's always fast paced from the get go, but now this new AJ character, he's slow and maniacal and menacing and more. Brooding, brooding. He was slow and maniacal, slow and menaceful. 
as he was, of course, taking it slow on Anderson until finally picking up the pace as AJ dominated for the only having a matchup with his slow, brooding style and his own physical style is wearing down Anderson. That's what AJ does now, wearing down slowly. Because Anderson, AJ used to wear down people fast with, of course, his fast pace action, his high flying moves. But now AJ's taking a new approach to wearing down an opponent by wearing him down more slowly, more maniacally, more menacingly, more methodically, methodically, you know, methodically, trying to pronounce that word, you know. But of course, as AJ was finally, was dominating and trying to get a groove on, of course, Anderson found a way to get back the advantage as he poked Mr. AJ in the eye and even had a DDT on the apron. And of course, Anderson took over most of the matchup with his own physical hard knock style. And of course, coming with revenge on the mind, of course, Anderson fighting for the entire Aces and H, wanting revenge over AJ for making him look like fools last week when AJ turned his back on Ace and H and not joining him. But as Anderson was getting momentum back with his own hard boarding style, AJ came flying back with his own moves, trying to gain back momentum for himself. And of course, Anderson came back. Let's kind of back and forth moves. You know, Anderson and AJ both jockeying for possession. And of course, AJ was countering with his own big moves. Even now, Anderson midway towards the early part of the match with a big splash. And he went for another splash. But AJ was going for a big move. And even Anderson hit him with a plunge. But of course, um, AJ had things in hand. He was putting Anderson in the trio wall. And he nailed him with that. And as AJ was finding a way to finally put the nail in Anderson and finish off Anderson, here comes Cut Angle. Wanting revenge on AJ for not joining him. Not allowing himself with TNA or anybody for that matter. It's kind of confusing. The crowd's kind of confused because they don't know whose AJ's side is on. Like, AJ hasn't shown any true illusion. Like I said, basically, he's an army of one. Like, everyone is going for him. That's what happens when you're an army of one. When you're in it for yourself, everybody's going for you. No matter what company they're in. No matter whose side are they on. TNA or Aces and Eights. You got to look out for... For all comments, especially like I said, that's what happened with AJ getting attacked by Angle, wanting revenge for AJ nailing him to Bullhammer last week, causing a disqualification victory for AJ. But as Angle was nailing on AJ, here come Ace and Ace, the rest of Ace and Ace for that matter, not to save AJ, but to feed on AJ and beat up Angle too. But as all of Ace and Ace came out, here comes the rest of TNA roster, here comes Magnus, here comes Joe. Here comes Zing, here comes Mr. Park, Joseph Park, and all hell broke loose as there was a brawl outside the ring with all the TNA rosters, AJ and Angle fought it off, and everybody fought out of the ring, leaving Sting and Blue Ray all to themselves in the ring to have a slug fast and impact. But as Magnus and Joe and all the other Ace and H members got cleared out, like I said, Sting and Blue Ray got it on into a slug fast until Sting got the power. Really hogged up a little. It was going for a scorpion death drop, but indeed, instead of that, he did a scorpion death lock instead, trying to nail it on Mr. Bully Ray until the rest of Ace and Eight came back to the ring to attack Sting. Specifically, Devon made the save for Bully Ray, and of course, did what they'd done to Sting a few weeks ago, but without a table though. A uh, 3D. So with Devon and Bully Ray nailing out Sting, the rest of Ace and Eight stood tall. As Billy Ray showed up the belt over a prone sting with all the Ace and Eights with their Ace and Eights symbol. As Impact went off the air with Ace and Eights dominant despite a rough evening for them when it comes to losing the main event. Big first matchup. And of course, losing to AJ by DQ. Ace and Eights stood tall in the end, getting momentum for themselves for their matches this Sunday, of course. We got Doc. Briscoe and Bischoff team up against Joe Magnus and the returning Jeff Hardy this Sunday. Sting takes on Bully Ray in a no-holds-barred match for the Tina World Championship. Gail Kim against Taryn Terrell. We have AJ against Kurt Angle. Triple uh, Fatal 4-way tag team title match with, of course, bad influence. Cassie Daniels, Chavo Nanatis, the champions, Gunner and James Storm, and Aries and Root. And, of course, Triple Threat Ultra X match. Uh, Mr. Kenny King defending against Chris Saban in Suicide in the Gut Check Final to see which of the Gut Check contestants, which one of them, will be in the Bound for Glory series. Sam Shaw against Alex Silva. That is it.
for my TD Impact review for tonight. Thank you all very much for watching. It was OK Impact tonight from Tampa, Florida. Next week, Atlanta. After the Summer Fuzzy pay per view in Boston. With that in mind, you have all been attacked by the review from Zach. Have a great weekend, everybody. Have a great night. Yeah. Oh, yeah.